Hi, I'm Dr. Lang Bilan. I've been practicing aesthetic medicine for almost two decades. The facial muscles of expression are striated muscles lying underneath the skin and they control facial expression. They generally originate on the bone and insert into the undersurface of the skin. They also interdigitate with the other facial muscles. Now when these facial mimetic muscles contract, they actually pull and move the overlying skin, producing wrinkles that generally occur at right angles to the direction of pull of the muscles. Functionally, the facial muscles are classified into two groups, the elevators that pull up or elevate a certain part of the face and the depressors that pull down. The frontalis muscle is a broad, flat sheet of muscles that originates from the galea aponeurosis to inserts into the skin of the forehead and the eyebrows, and these muscles also interdigitate with the muscle fibres of the glabella complex, consisting of the procerus, the corrugators, and the orbicularis oculi muscles. Now, the frontalis muscles is the only elevator of the forehead or the upper face, and when it, they contract, it actually pulls up and elevates the eyebrows, producing horizontal forehead lines. The orbicularis oculi muscles is a thin, broad sheet of muscle encycling the eye, and they spread over the temple and downward onto the cheek. The orbicularis oculi muscle is also a depressor muscles, which when they contract, they cause crow's feet and sagging in the mid face. The procerus and corrugator supercilii are depressor muscles that act to draw the media ends of the eyebrow inwards and downwards, producing the sign 11 or the glabella frown lines. What about the mid face elevators? Now, the mid face elevator muscles consist of the zygomaticus minor, major, and the rhizorius muscles, and when they contract, they elevate or lift up the cheeks and the corner of the mouth to produce a smiling expression. Facial aging is a multifactorial process involving different facial tissues from the skin, fat pads, facial retaining ligaments, muscles, and bone. Now, as we age, there's loss of bone, fats, and subcutaneous tissue, laxity of the facial ligaments resulting in loss of structural supports for the face. The superficial fat pads in the face start to descend and the facial features start to go down south, resulting in the formation of nasolabial folds, jowls and saggy lower face. And repetitive facial movements and sun damage also results in the formation of fine lines and wrinkles. As mentioned earlier, loss of structural supports due to volume depletion and changes to the facial muscles and the connective tissue framework results in an increased soft tissue laxity, which is additionally influenced by the effects of gravity. Since the facial muscles are interconnected via the facial system and the overlying skin, weakening of these muscles may result in a visible descent of the tissue as we age. The weaker the facial muscles are and the lower the resting muscle tone, the facial muscles are unable to hold the overlying tissue in place and of course, this results in droopy eyebrows and saggy cheeks. On the other hand, when the resting muscle tone is increased, the muscles have the strength to hold the O-line tissue in place, resulting in lifted eyebrows and firmer cheeks. Now, even if you have great genes and look much younger than you are, age-related changes in your facial appearance are really unavoidable. Now, of course, one way to defy aging is to do a surgical facelift, which removes excess skin and tissue and acts to lift the saggy skin in the face. But we know that a surgical facelift is expensive and it carries itself uh, the risk of downtime and also the risk of the anesthesia. And not many people are ready for a surgical facelift regardless uh, of their age. Now, what are the ways you can do to actually delay the process of aging? One of the best ways you can do is actually to wear a sunscreen to protect yourself from the harmful UVA and UVB rays of the sun. Now, you want to apply sufficient sunscreen on exposed parts of the body. You really want to avoid going out into the sun uh, when the sun is at, at its high from between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You want to wear uh, white brim hats and also a long sleeve shirt to protect yourself from the harmful rays of the sun. 
Now, the second thing you want to do is to actually use a simple moisturizer to moisturize your skin. You may also want to use an exfoliant cream to actually improve the appearance of the older skin by getting rid of dead skin cells that don't slough off as readily as they did when we are younger. Now, the two most common injectables that we can use to help delay the process of aging or to actually rejuvenate the face are botulinum toxin injections, which are used to treat and soften the expression lines on the forehead, the crow's feet, and the sign 11 in between the glabella, and they act to actually uh, partially immobilize the muscles to soften these deep expression lines. The next injectable that's commonly used to actually help rejuvenate the face are dermal fillers. The commonly used dermal fillers are hyaluronic acid fillers, and when these hyaluronic acid dermal fillers are injected into the face, they act to replace the volume loss to actually also draw water into the dermal matrix, causing the skin to plumb up, making the skin look younger, more hydrated and more refreshed. Now the next commonly used uh, technique to actually help rejuvenate the face are skin tightening devices. And these skin tightening devices uses technology such as radio frequency, high intensity focus ultrasound waves or even simple ultrasound waves. And they can use to address a variety of conditions, including to actually help improve wrinkles and fine lines, to tighten loose skin, to improve the appearance of cellulite, and even to get rid of unwanted fats. Now, this is end phase. As mentioned, our face loses muscle tone and density, facial fats and bone when we age. Particularly as we enter into our 30s, there is significant decrease in the amount of elastin and collagen produced and preserved. Together, these factors contribute to significant loss of definition of the face, relaxation and descent of the brow and the cheeks, and weakening of the support layers like the facial ligaments. Now, end phase reverses these early signs of aging and it is suitable for patients as young as in their 30s. End phase is a revolution in facial treatments that simultaneously targets muscles and skin to tighten, lift, and tone the face. It also helps to restore the facial contours without any pain, downtime, or using any needles. Now, Enphase is the first US FDA cleared and C marked non invasive device on the market that uses synchronized radio frequency and high fence, which stands for high intensity facial electrical stimulation technology. The result is less wrinkles and more lift naturally without using any needles. Now, BTI Aesthetics, the makers of MSCOP Neo, has created a solution using the same technologies for the face. Building on the MSCOP Neo body sculpting treatment, Enphase uses science and technology to deliver amazing results in just one easy treatment. In fact, Enphase is known as the MSCOP Neo of the face. Now, Enphase is the first US FDA cleared and C marked non invasive device on the market, utilizing the simultaneous application of both synchronized RF and high fast energies for non-invasive facial lifting and wrinkle reduction. The synchronized RF remodels and smooths the skin by heating the dermis to up to a temperature of 40 to 42 degrees Celsius and increasing the levels of collagen and elastin fibers, resulting in an overall improvement in skin quality. The high fast technology which stands for High Intensity Focus Electrical Stimulation, is specifically designed to selectively induce supramaximal contractions of the ele elevator muscles of the forehead, which is the frontalis muscles, and the elevators of the mid-face, which are namely the zygomaticus minor, major, and the rhizorius muscles in the face, and restore and elevate the supports of the facial tissues by selectively contracting these elevator muscles to increase the density and quality of these muscle structure. Now we know that the frontalis muscles are a pair of vertically orientated muscles in the forehead that acts to lift the eyebrows when they contract. The mid-face elevators, namely the zygomaticus major, minor, and the rhizorius muscles are responsible for elevating the mid-face or the cheeks. 
Now, the zygoma medicus major muscles control facial expression, drawing the mouth's angle upward and outward, while the zygoma medicus minor muscles draw the upper lip backward, upward and outward. What about these rhizorous muscles? Now, the rhizorous muscles, when they contract, they pull the corner of the mouth outwards or laterally, and also in the direction of outward and upward motion. Now, MV's results are enduring, patient satisfaction is high, and there's actually zero discomforts reported by most patients. Now, during clinical trials, no adverse events were observed or reported during any of the clinical test sites. In clinical studies, patients enjoyed 37% reduction in wrinkles, 23% in lifting effect, 26% increase in collagen, and 30% increase in muscle tone. Now, Enphase and MSCOP Neo, although they are both produced by BTL Aesthetics, they use slightly different technology. Now, Enphase utilizes the HIFES, which stands for High Intensity Facial Electrical Stimulation Technology, while the MSCOP Neo uses HIFEM, which is High Intensity Focused Electromagnetic Waves. Of course, both devices also uses the synchronized RF technology. Now, the high phase energy in end phase can penetrate up to 2 cm skin depth. The penetration is dependent on the targeted conductive tissues, the nerve fibers, and the muscles. Now, currents are applied directly onto the tissue and affect muscle innervation. It targets small, delicate, superficial facial muscles. The applicators for end phase are specifically designed to allow the high fast technology to target individual specific muscles. Now, the high fem energy found in MSCOP Neo can actually penetrate 7 to 10 centimeters of the skin. The high fem induces secondary currents in the muscles and it bypasses the thick fat layer to reach the entire thickness of the deep muscle groups. Unlike high fast, high fem is designed to affect the whole muscle group. Now, the effect of RF in end phase on the skin is based on dermal heating. When the RF temperature is heated up to 40 to 42 degrees Celsius, it stimulates an increase in fibroblast activity and all collagen and elastin fibers decompose and denature and this leads to structural changes within the skin and an overall improvement of the skin quality rather than fat burning. Whereas the RF found in uh, MSCOP Neo actually can cause fat cell death or apoptosis. Now, MVS combines high fast which again stands for High Intensity Focused Electrical Stimulation for Muscle Contraction and Synchronize RF for skin and connective tissue heating. The high fast technology induces an electrical field to selectively contract facial muscles to supramaximal levels. The three applicators target the forehead, frontalis muscles, and the cheeks, namely the zygomaticus major, minor, and rhizorous muscles, and they are applied simultaneously. The forehead applicator has been designed to specifically target the frontalis muscles and its surrounding connective tissue environments, enveloping the only eyebrow elevator. Now, since the frontalis muscle is an eyebrow elevator, strengthening formerly atrophic frontalis muscles aid with eyebrow ptosis and actually lead to eyebrow elevation. The cheek applicators are designed to stimulate the muscles of the cheek elevators or the mid-face elevators, namely the zygomaticus major, minor and the rhizorous muscles. Now, stimulation of these superficial muscles lead to an elevation of the entire cheek, increasing the mid-face uh, facial volume and improving the nasolabial fold. Now, increasing the pull of these mid-face elevators further leads to a repositioning not only to the mid-facial but also of the lower facial soft tissues. The result is an amazing reduction in jowls and increased in jawline contouring. 
Now, the M-Phase protocol is one 20-minute treatments every week for four weeks. Some maintenance treatments, or I would like to call it boosting treatments, may be needed depending on the individual skin conditions when they're starting out, their desired results, and their expectations. Now, toning the frontalis muscles of the forehead results in smoothening of the forehead, a reduction of the horizontal forehead lines, and a lifting of the eyebrows. Reinforcing the zygomaticus major muscles leads to reduction of the depth of the nasolabial folds. Now, almost everyone is suitable for M phase. M phase is ideal for patients seeking facial treatments without injections. Patients in the age range of 40 to 55 years old may see the greatest improvements. It is beneficial to patients who are concerned about mild skin laxity, wrinkles, loss of skin plumbness, elastin and collagen, or saggy jawline. It is a more natural solution for younger patients not yet ready for a surgical facelift. Therefore, for those who do not want to have a surgical facelift, Enphase is the one option and the only option that offers a whole new approach by not only using RF, but also high fast technology to help enhance muscle tone to the face and lift specific areas of laxity at the cheeks, at the jawline and the forehead. Now, generally speaking, four sessions of end phase at weekly interval can last between six to nine months. Of course, that depends on the condition of the patient's face when it first started out and the degree of sagginess of the face. Now, boosting sessions of end phase to maintain the good effects may be required at an interval of between two to three months for optimal results. For more elderly patients with more facial sagginess, more sessions of end phase, for example, six to eight sessions may be needed for optimal results and also the desired results of the patients. In a recent study by Dr. Yale Hallas, a US cosmetic surgeon, the results of end phase can last up to 12 months, depending on the individual skin condition, as I've mentioned when they first started out. Now, as aging is an unstoppable process, boosting sessions are important. It is recommended to perform an phase treatments every three to six months, depending on the patient's skin condition and his or her desired results. Now, M phase will not negate the effects of botulinum toxin injections as the applicators are targeted at the elevators of the forehead which is the frontalis muscles and the elevators of the mid face, which are the zygomaticus minor, major, and rhizorius muscles, sparing the depressors. In fact, the effects of botulinum toxin injections, which are injected into the depressors of the upper face, namely the procerus, the corrugator supercilii, and the obicularis oculi muscles, to relax and soften the glabellar frown lines or sign 11 and the crow's feet complement m phase treatments which reduces the horizontal forehead lines. The high fast technology which selectively targets the facial muscles and fascia to increase the resting muscle tone therefore helps to further reduce the wrinkles and the fine lines. Yes, you may still have fillers after m phase. Fillers help to restore facial volume loss to actually sculpt the face, while M phase tones and lift the face, and at the same time, M phase rejuvenates the skin for an overall improvement in skin quality. The combination treatments of M phase and filler actually complement each other. However, it is advised to have filler injections at least two weeks after an M phase treatment.